So recently I've started drawing and I'm terrible at it. I'd never really drawn before, mostly I think because ever since a young age I was not particularly gifted at it and I knew it. So I went out of my way to never draw really. And that made it so that I've had near zero progress from then to now. But since I have a desire to start publishing my fiction on YouTube, I've had to come up with creative ways to get illustrations behind my work. Originally, I toyed with the idea of hiring artists to illustrate my stories, but having to pay reasonable fees to artists on projects that I don't expect to see much revenue on anytime in the near future had me shuddering a bit. My hope is that the fact that my illustrations are poor won't matter, and also that they'll get better over time. One reason I think that the quality of my illustrations might not matter as much as they could has to do with the way that I perceive that other people perceive stories. Inherently, as a species, we seem to have an extensive interest in stories. We just gobble them up. The rate at which the average person can watch multiple season-long television shows on Netflix or binge on YouTube videos or reread the Harry Potter series for the seventh time, etc., etc., serves as examples for this. And it isn't as though this is a new habit of ours. The Bible, as well as other similar religious texts, are something that I ultimately consider works of fiction in that they are great, powerful, wise stories that have been handed down for generations. And this isn't even the oldest example of storytelling. Cavemen used to draw paintings on the wall illustrating what they wanted to do for the day, often hunting a big animal. But this is essentially a story. Very recently, a relic that has vanished, the movie theater. The movie theater used to be a place where people would flock to regularly, no matter how expensive the ticket, soda, and popcorn prices, and no matter how bad the sequel. In some sense, I think there is nothing that is more fundamental to the makeup of a human being than stories. I have my reasons for believing this, though the intricacies of which will have to be left for another day. Essentially, I think that storytelling has made us human. We think in stories, we analyze the past through stories, and we craft the future through stories as well. And I suspect that isn't changing anytime soon. As long as people can follow a story with some sort of clear visual guidance, my hope is anyways, they will consume it. But anyways, for fun, here's one of my more recent drawings so that you can see the quality of skills I'm dealing with. This is one of the ones I'm more proud of. The cat heads only look so good because I followed a tutorial I found online to draw one, which I'll link down below. Then I used my drawing program to replicate the drawing I made twice. Here's another drawing, one that I'm less proud of, to say the least, but also exemplifies my current skill level well. My drawings are a bit weird, but so am I, so that's no surprise. One thing that did surprise me is how fun I've found drawing to be. For reference, I'm drawing digitally, mostly anyways, on an iPad Pro with Procreate. It's been an absolute blast. I really love the features that the digital platform provides as opposed to drawing on paper. First, the feature that lets you tap to undo your last stroke, eraser move, etc. is a real lifesaver. I can only imagine how painful learning to draw without that would be. All the different brushes and colors you get to have access to at the press of a button is also endlessly amusing, if sometimes decision paralysis inducing. The one downside that I see, perhaps there are more, surely there are more, but I'm such an amateur I don't really notice them, is that when using watercolor, you don't get the cool spread effect of the wet water that you do in real life. Some notes for those who are considering trying to learn how to draw from a fellow amateur. You're going to suck for a while, so don't worry about that. You'll get better if you really enjoy it, and if you practice a little bit every day or every week. I've already seen a lot of progress, and it's only been a few months since I started. If you're at all familiar with tablets slash computers, digital art can make your art appear more impressive. Plus, it's a lot of fun. The amount of tools that you get access to through an application like Procreate is a real game changer. I can do with a little bit of digging and a click of a button what it likely took a professional artist years to learn in their early career. When considering what to draw, 
focus on a theme. In my most recent YouTube story, which I'll link down below, I had no shortage of ideas for illustrations to go along with it, mostly because I was following a theme. In this particular case, this theme was dreamlike. So all my illustrations use ink strokes for sketching, eerie slash dark colors for backgrounds, and surreal locations slash objects for subjects. And you don't have to have a story in order to have a theme. Maybe your theme for a set of drawings could be animals you find at the zoo or Brooklyn at night. Either way, following a theme should help you find many different ideas for drawing. And lastly, just get started. This is a tip that could apply to almost anything, and it certainly also applies here. Get pen to paper. Buy a digital drawing device if you can afford it. Buy some paint and a canvas, and then just get to it. If it's something you'll enjoy for the rest of your life, the you of the present will know as soon as you start doing it. If not, well, at least you gave something a shot. And you know, maybe stick with it for a month or so. That way you make sure you aren't just quitting because it's hard or you're lazy or you suck. I'll leave you with a funny story. When I sent my girlfriend, who isn't nearly as weird as I am, by the way, though she has her quirks. When I sent my girlfriend, who's an actual artist, my cat grass piece, her suggestion was that I should make the cats cuter. I was skeptical because I felt that one of the piece's strengths was its surreality and that I risked lowering the quality if I actually tried to make it cute, given my inexperience. But I gave her inquiry a bite and asked her what she would do to make it cuter. After a few moments, she sent me a mock-up photo that she made on her phone. So my final question is, who did it better? Until next time.